Hi everybody, so today I am working on some semi tires and got to thinking over the time that it took me to kind of figure out how to do this just with trial and error and some YouTube that it was tough to find a video of kind of the whole process of taking a tire off and putting it back on the rim kind of from start to finish. So just figured I'd try my hand at it and see if I can help some people out. So uh, I'll preface this with saying I'm not a mechanic. Uh, this might not be the right way or the easiest way to do it. It's just the way that, that we found works over some time of, like I said, trial and error and just getting it figured out. So this is the tools that we use. Um, got a bead breaker here, just a slide hammer bead breaker, uh, a couple of spoons, some lube, a uh, bead blaster, and then just We'll be using some other fittings and then also a valve stem remover so i already drained the air out of this tire just for time um but basically if you were starting off with a tire that's full of air or even if it's not full of air you need to get this out you would go in here with your valve stem tool and turn it out and this is what's going to come out of there and then if there's air in the tire It'll let all the air out through there, and uh, then you'll have a flat tire to work with. And I think I've got it set up here where I can... Hopefully that is a pretty good view. So to start with, take the bead breaker and go right in, right here between the rim and the bead. There's other kinds of bead breakers around, but with this one, it's just a slide hammer. You just work it down in between the rim and the bead. And sometimes it takes, sometimes they pop right off. Sometimes it takes two or three times of popping her down and moving around. Okay, so now this bead is completely let loose. Flip the tire over. camera and then do the same thing for the other side so as you can see the bead is completely let loose all the way around the tire and for removal and mounting um, this is the way that the rim should set with uh, basically I think most of the time it's valve stem pointed down but so that the bowl of the rim is facing down otherwise it does not work so Next order of business is to take the tire lube and go all the way around the top here in between the tire and the rim. And, I don't know, you really can't use too much of this stuff. It really makes the job a lot easier. Okay. Now, to start dismounting, take our spoons. Now, the way that the spoon goes, and this is something that took me a long time to figure out is for the first bite it goes notched down towards the rim so take and slide in between the tire there rest the notch on the rim lever it around and another thing that helps as you start this process is the opposite side from the side that you're spooning kick it down there's actually a groove in the rim that the tire can settle into and give it a little bit more space to move over so usually I'll kind of get it a little bit tight here and just go around and kind of kick it down let it settle into that ridge and then lever up and then take the other spoon and the way I do it is I go in the opposite way now so instead of if you're looking at it from this way instead of 
the notch on the spoon being down, I do it the other direction so that the notch is up looking at it this way. So, and sometimes after you get this first bite, you'll maybe have to let it loose a little bit just to get this one into a space. Get this one tight and then lever this one around. And then as you go, on this first one you'll want a big enough bite so that the bead is up over the rim and it will sit there so you can see it doesn't want to fall back down like before when I took too small of a bite there and when I say bite I'm just talking about the distance between the spoons um, so this way here my spoons are free or at least one of them will be and I can start working my way around so, this spoon, the first one that I put in is free, so I'll move over to the still mounted side on the other direction from the spoon that's in and try to find a place along here where I can squeeze this bar in between the bead and the rim. And sometimes if it's real tight, you know, usually there will be a space somewhere in here that you can get into. Sometimes you'll have to kind of give it a little kick so you get that little bit of space especially like I said these first few it's really tight so there we're down in between the rim and the bead again and we just then we just cover it and just always be watching your spoon that you leave in like this one was here as I was levering just kind of always be watching because sometimes if you lose a bite or something, this can flip up. So a lot of times if it seems like there's a lot of tension, I'll actually put a foot on this just so it doesn't fling up and off and I lose my bite or it hits me or something like that. So now this spoon is free and the last. There we go. So now this side of the tire is all the way off. And now, for the next step, lift the tire up. I gotta grab my knee first. Lift the tire up, and as you see, the rim is free in here, it's just held on on the back side here. Take and lube this side that we're going to take off here. Okay, now to get the rim out, the way that I do it is the other side of the spoon, the, the flatter side. What I'll do is I'll sneak it in here and like I said, sometimes you kind of got to jockey the rim around a little bit to get it in there. And what I'm trying to do is this notch, trying to get it behind the rim so that I have something to bite onto. So, just like that. And just pull against the tire and it should pop right out. If it doesn't, sometimes I have had to take the other bar and actually do two kind of close together to get enough leverage on it. But um, typically they've been pretty good for me about popping out that way. And so now I'm just going to throw this same tire on because we're actually replacing rims, so I don't have a new tire to go on. So, going on, say this is a brand new tire. First things first, lube up both beads generously. No, 
Okay, then to get started, if you get the tire, you know, stand, stood up fairly close to the rim here at the bottom, and then set the tire over top of the rim, and then where the rim, or the, the tire is above the rim still, because down here we're below the rim, and then it goes above the rim here. I'll just put a knee into it a couple of times to get it set. And I know there's some guys, especially bigger guys, that can actually do the first bead just by stomping on it that way. I've never been able to do it. But what you want to do is just basically get it so that it's locked there so that it can't spin. Because then when you start your barring on the first bead, it'll be locked in place and it can just slip over instead of just running around on you. So, next, we will take the curved end of the spoon again, and so with the spoon this direction, so again, um, notch down towards the rim, go, so you can see here, like I said, we're below the rim here, and then we cross over, and this is the unmounted portion. So, what you'll want to do is get in between the rim and a part of the bead that is above the rim. And what I do that makes it a little bit easier is I'll pull it back until I'm basically against the top of the tire. And then if you just set your knee into it a little bit and keep pressure on it to get this top bead down, it gives you a lot more room to pull the bar over. Otherwise you're kind of fighting, pull it against this top part. So I just knee it down until I've got it, you know, fairly low. And then foot in the rim to give you some leverage. And just down like that. And basically you just keep working your way around. So we just mounted, you know, about six inches there. And like I said, I maybe take smaller bites than I could. You know, a guy could maybe do this in one or two, but over time, I guess it just seems easier to me to do a couple more bites and a couple more easier bites than trying to take the big ones out right away. And same thing here. Get that top set on the bar. And boom. The first one is on. Now, grab one other tool. Now, if you're doing these alone, this tool, I have no idea what it's called, but it is a lifesaver. Because if you have two guys, you can do it just with bars, and even one guy can do it just with bars. But the problem is when you're putting it back on, it's tough to get a free bar, in my opinion. So I usually, when I used to do it with just bars, I'd actually run three bars just so I could always have a loose one to grab the next. But with this, what you do, and it's just kind of a little chalk with a brake on it. So you set one side of the tire down below the rim and then you set this chalk in and basically that's a free set of hands so as i work around the tire this brake won't move and it will hold this piece of the bead underneath so i don't need to i basically it gives me a starting point that i don't have to mess with anymore and uh frees me up so now and it's going to be exactly the same as the bottom bead bar in with the notch down and just basically working around. So, and still need two bars for this part. So I've got this one set and kind of the same thing. Like I say, keep an eye on your set bar so it doesn't fling up at you. And then same thing as when you're taking it off, it helps 
whatever portion is below the rim already, it helps to kind of kick it, settle it down into that ridge. And then it goes on. And that's actually one of the things that took me a long time to figure out and I would fight tires all the way around because they weren't set in the ridge. So this will save a lot of effort on getting the rest of speed on, just settling that down. And then especially when it gets tight. So now, same thing. when you do that little kick you can feel all the tension just let loose of it and here like I said before I, I take real small bites as I move around I'm sorry I'm probably blocking the camera for part of this but you know I suppose I have this spoon down and I'm probably six inches on this and like you say maybe you can do more maybe you need less but that seems to be the easiest that I've found Just slides right on, and on to the next. And this is the same thing. If you're having trouble, if it's too tight against the rim to get a bar in, just let your last bar out a little bit, give some slack, get it in, and then reset this bar. And there it is. And the last little bit sometimes doesn't want to pop over and sometimes it's tough to get a bite on that last little bit so what I'll do if that happens is get my last bar over and tight and then take a like a one pound hammer something like that and the piece that doesn't want to drop put the tension on and then just hammer on the tire not on the rim along that piece that doesn't want to drop and as long as you got tension on the bar usually that will drop and then Remove the helping hand here, and the tire's on. So, the next order of business. Is to set the bead. So. Sorry, I gotta get my air hose is squared away. I wasn't quite as prepared as I thought I was. Okay. So, the way that I start this process is no valve stem in. It's just open still from when we let the air out of the tire. And for the first bead setting, we took a, a tire chuck and took the insert out of it. So basically, instead of needing a valve stem in there to actuate this and let a real slow flow go through, this is just a through, I'll show you here. So like I say, it's just basically air right through that you can direct in there and it gives a little bit more volume than if you put the valve stem in and have this together. Um, so we have this one special just for setting beads. Sometimes you can just do that and the bead will set right there and that's as far as you need to go, the bead is set. Usually I'll pump it up to you know, 20, 30 pounds, make sure everything looks good and then take this off and put a valve stem in to hold the air pressure in and then from there, you just fill it like a regular tire. If it fights you, then we have a bead blaster. And basically, the way that you use this, and I'm probably not going to demonstrate this part just because it's really loud. I'm not looking across on video, but, so you fill this up, you know, we it'll hold 100 pounds of air or so. And the way this works is, you fill it up with air and 
you set it in the tire. It's got this little notch here that I put against the rim and squeeze it in between the bead and the rim and then have your air supply running in there as you do this. So it's sitting there running, the bead's not set. Move this valve down, it'll give it a blast of air. And that usually, and sometimes it'll take two or three tries depending on how the, uh, you know, how stiff the tire is and all that. But uh, it'll just give a blast of air in here, enough to pop it up and hopefully catch the bead. And then after that, it's the same process. Air it up to 20, 30 pounds, make sure everything looks good. Put your valve stem back in while there's still air pressure in it just to hold it and then fill it up just like you would a tire. Your bead is set and you're off and running. So so anyway, that's the way that we do it. And like I said, if I'm sure there are people that have better ways or anything, and if anybody wants to leave comments that they think would help people out, but uh, that's the way we do it. And I know there's a lot of other tools we've tried. I don't know, some of the other tools as far as like uh, ones that you run an impact wrench to pull them off and those work. Um, but I've gotten to the point now that I kind of understand the bars that I think I can do it faster that way and uh, a little bit easier and this way you can do it out in the field you basically need what three or four tools and you can hammer it out so anyway that is the way that we do semi tires and thank you for watching